Welcome to uh, what should be a spooky episode of In Front of the Scenes. My name is Kevin from Points Cobra, where I come out from behind the scenes to chat with clients about what they got going on. And we're recording this on Halloween, so that's why I'm dressed up. And, and uh, that's why our guest, uh, Johannes Hussetaival from Pennies by the Pound, is dressed up as a, as a camper, as a dude in a bucket hat. <laughs> As, uh, as as we discussed, because I, I, I shot him an email last night. I was like, maybe we'll dress up for this because, like, you know, it's Halloween. We could have some fun. He's like, oh, I'll see what I can do. So I'm so I'm I'm Matt Skiba from Alkaline Trio, my favorite band. It's what the, this is, this eye stuff is and the, the, the tie and whatnot. And I'm kind of doing that just because, like, they just put out a new single, Blood, Hair, and Eyeballs, new album coming out in January, too. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. I'm seeing them in Montreal next March. Uh, but But right now the focus is on... Johannes and the, the fellas from Helsinki, Pennies by the Pound, a prog rock act with a, a nice pop sheen to them. So, Johannes, good to see you, buddy. Um, thank you for doing nice this. You, and, yeah, before we uh, before we get into it, let's just acknowledge uh, the fellas that are not with us right now, the rest of your bandmates. So just uh, introduce them pretty quick. All right. So there's me. Uh, I'm handling uh, guitar, keyboards and vocals live. I mean, on the records, I do all sorts of other things as well. Uh, then there's uh, Vesaranta, our super guitar lead guy. Then there's Alexander Mini, also a guitar guy, but he plays mostly rhythm, takes over most of my duties live, actually, nowadays. And then we have a new guy, uh, Jan Aspvik on the drums, who hasn't played on the records yet. He's very keen on uh, getting there. And uh, then, of course, Tommy Larkson and our trusty bass player, who... Who's our trusty bass player? Oh, there you go. You, you, everybody needs a trusty bass player. The underappreciated bass players, as they are. So we love Tommy. We just shout out to you too. Yep. Um. So, guys, you guys uh, have a couple of singles. You have an EP, and you have two full lengths now. And I, I it's perfect that you you run down um uh, all the kind of the the newish personnel because typically what has happened is you on the recordings. I've done. Uh, not necessarily everything, but most things. So before, before I guess, uh, uh, Jan, new drummer, right, and um, and whatnot. How did the live shows go? Were you like, were you drumming and singing? Were you doing like four different things? Like, how uh, that... to be honest, we didn't play much live before this latest or after this latest recording because because our first album came out the like the first full length. Yeah. Uh, came out during the pandemic right so we couldn't kind of support that live at all so we just kind of didn't think about that much <laughs> let's say before that we just did a couple of shows and a couple of acoustic shows and things like that so yeah we, so we hadn't really got any proper electric proper live shows before our latest record so was that because now now Heat Death of the Universe, the first full length came out yeah. in twenty twenty one. So yeah, so right in the like the the heart of the pandemic. Yeah, right smack there. middle in there. Yeah. Uh, but was it was it largely COVID or was it also a good chunk logistically uh, for the reason? Uh, it it, it, it was them. both. It was both, but uh, it was very disheartening, you know. To uh, uh, we had an idea to get a drummer. I contacted a few quite prominent Finnish drummers, uh, and. Uh, we had an idea for a tour and shows and all that, but then when nothing was possible, basically, we tried organizing this and that and tried contacting people and doing all sorts of things. But when it seemed that you can't get anywhere, then we just decided that, okay, scrap that whole thing and let's just make another record. That that was our plan. And yeah. Instead of like trying to promote the previous one, which we couldn't do, then we were like, all right, we can't do that, so let's just make new music and then think about that. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So if if so, if we take it back to the beginnings of Pennies by the Pound, and uh, of course, uh, you you've been kind of the main driver of of the group from the beginning. I know you spent uh, high school your high school years in California, so you've lived yeah. over on you're in you're in uh, of uh, course you're in Davis, California. In Helsinki. Yeah. Okay, so up, up north, right? Uh, yeah. Yep, that's right. Um, so how much uh, of your musical influence? came from the time spent there as opposed to to finland uh, or was it a pretty good mix that that kind of led you to where you are musically today mm, well that's a very difficult question to answer to be honest but uh okay. I, I i have a lot of because finland has a very 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 strong uh local music scene or music industry even well, what are the dominant genres locally 
nowadays it's predominantly pop, but okay. uh, but uh, it used to be when I was uh, high school age. It used to be rock. It used to be like a rock sing sung in Finnish, and uh, and that that was a very big influence for me. And lots of those bands were quite like CMX, one of my favorite bands of all time, a Finnish band. Uh, used to be quite progressive as well, even if it wasn't a prog band per se. Yeah. But, uh, and some others like Ismail, like about you, you wouldn't know any of them, but... Uh, well, I name uh, them anyway. Well, yeah. I'll, I'll discover with, with this. So you go ahead and yeah. tell me some of your faves. Uh, and, uh, but then I've always loved, as a 90s kid, you know, I, I found my music, I've, I was born in 1980. So I kind of found all of my music almost, or started finding all of my music in '91, which was kind of the year. That, of course, yeah. That, Nirvana that kind of, release. Never mind that. Yeah, year. yeah. So and my, one, one of one my favorite band. bands of all time, Pearl Jam and Alice in mm -hmm. Chains and Metallica. And well, Metallica goes before that, obviously, but all sorts of bands. Yeah. And my favorite YouTube record as well, Achtung Baby and uh, things like that. And uh, so, well, Pearl Jam is a good example. P Pearl Jam is one of those bands which really, really, really is a big one for me. And I listen to that a lot in California. And then things like Faith No More, that's, for example, has always been a huge thing for me. Yeah. And maybe, maybe Primus, maybe some, some of these kind of bands from that age which were really really uh influential for me and primus even uh, came to play at the uh university of davis campus a free show when i was there so oh, very uh, cool yeah that, that was kind of a nice nice thing to see <laughs> and, and i would see you too in san francisco during that time as well during the uh well, pop mart so so that, that was really nice fun good okay so yeah, so that uh, so that makes sense then. Um, and when it when it comes to um, I guess the sound of pennies by the pound, like you guys are often described as, as prog, but you you do have a very kind of accessible sound. Like it's not super like like nerdy and like like you know how like like you got to yeah. be like, a certain type of person really is is into prog. Like you're those those just rock nerd types, and I mean that like as a compliment, right? But like I feel like you yeah guys yeah yeah no, kind no of, offense against them. <laughs> yeah, no 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 for sure like um like. So I guess what when you if you were to just describe your band in terms of like the, the prog influence in terms of maybe the the popular influence, um, uh, in in your words, I guess kind of how how would you sum up Pennies by the Pound? Mm, let's say that uh, we're a group of musicians who kind of try to. Well, I love a good pop hook, you know, uh, yeah. and and I, and I I do love a good well rock pop hook. Let's say there, there's lots of bands which are kind of in the middle between those two, but uh, but I do love a bits of complications as well, like uh, different time signatures and things like that, and changing up things during the middle of the song so that there might be like ten parts in the song, even if those are not overly complicated in themselves but the mm. song might still be comprised of like lots of different things and uh i can i don't know i, I think maybe maybe the melo melodies and all that are the key because a lot of people have told me or us well i make most of the songs that's true but still they wouldn't sound like that without the other guys as well because they especially Vesa and Tommy the lead guitarist and the bass player bring a huge even melodic element to whatever I bring on the table because they're it's it's intricate let's say it's it's not complicated but it can be quite intricate if you take your time listening to it like the bass yeah. parts the lead guitar parts the uh vocal melody maybe some little keyboards on the background that it kind of um, I have a, I have a big classical music background as well so that might be something related to that because we kind of try to do a complete kind of thing you know that not it's it's hard to I don't know if it's hard to explain but no no I got you so like yeah. well the classical background like maybe it's 
where when 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 the stuff is a little bit more kind of like grandiose and a bit more of um like like you talked about time signatures and stuff maybe yeah. that's where that comes in like just that yeah that, probably that, that subtle influence but also like in in that way that's if you got these different instruments like just the guitar and the bass and the keyboards and vocals you try to make the songs like so that they don't overlap too much that they they kind of complement each other in the so, same. You, so you mean like you, you they don't sound the same like each song like with yeah. an album will very much have its own kind of vibe. yeah yeah pretty much yeah yeah okay. pretty much when, when you write um when you talk about the layers and you talk about just like kind of the genres you guys do generally do you write sp- um, like just just for recording, or do you also kind of keep the live in mind? Because I would imagine that a lot of your stuff would be a tougher live, like without several people. Just it, it is, just it, is it is tougher live. I have to admit. Uh, yeah. mm, I used to write without thinking about the live thing at all, because this whole band originally started uh, well, maybe five or six years ago. Mm, as a project that I didn't think that it's going to be live ever, basically. That was, I, I had some other bands at that time, and well, I still do, but that's another discussion altogether. And uh, yeah. uh, at that time, I thought that this is going to be just me doing some records, maybe only singles, maybe only whatever, one EP or whatnot. But then it grew and grew on me and grew on some other people as well. But still, up until, well, during the last record, we didn't think anything about live. It was just like, let's do this and let's do that and let's just learn them when we have to. But, and that's been fun though. And now we are thinking about our next record, which is, I I don't know when when we're going to record it, probably next spring actually, but when it's going to be out, who knows, but... uh, Let's say that that's been uh, doing that or tra- uh, rehearsing for that and doing those songs and writing those songs. That's been much more with thing with the live like thinking in mind because now we have a full band in the rehearsal space as well, and we've been practicing with the full band the new tunes as well and all that. So that that's that's going to be a bit different actually. That that's going to be a, another new direction for us guys. Yeah. But, that's cool. It's it's always interesting to to think about that because, like you were saying, you kind of at first pictured Pegs by the Pound as a studio act. It's just yeah. you know, kind of making songs. So so playing shows just was barely on the radar. But then you know to to think about when you when you're a musician, you're writing songs. You obviously want to write what you want to make the song as as good as it can be. But then if you do have oh crap, how are we gonna how are we gonna pull this off? Because uh, <laughs> I don't I don't I don't I know how you feel. But for me, if I go to a show. And I, I, I want, as, as much as you can, you know, have some license to have fun when you're on stage, I, yeah. I want the songs to be ideally as true to the recordings as possible. I, like if, I agree. I go, if I go see a band and it's just, it's so stripped down to the point where it's like, oh, that was, they can't do this. That's like, I, 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 like, I do agree. if it's still good, it's still kind of like, you Yeah, know. I, I do agree to an extent though, but uh, let, let's say that for me, I always think about Led Zeppelin. It's a cliche, I know, but still, that's one of the bands I've listened to the most in my whole life, and yeah. uh, it's uh, I, I always think about how different they used to sound live and on record, but in different ways, you know. It wasn't like it's something missing or something, wh- whatever it is, but it, it was just different. I mean, it, it did sound different, because on record, they have like this five or six guitar tracks on top of each other and all that kind of thing going on and live obviously not and uh, i think that's the kind of way we try to approach that as well we try to incorporate as many things in the record that we have done as we can but yeah, uh, obviously it's not always possible and some songs like the end times from the uh our latest nothing side album We've heard some very good uh, comments from the audience that it's a very kind of stripped down arrangement live, but it's maybe it even fits the song better because it's even more minimalistic than it is on the record. So, 
Yeah, yeah, and 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 like it's not necessarily that obviously like when you play songs all the time too, if say you're touring or whatnot, it can get a little boring. So I get wanting to kind of spice it up and give people yeah, and yeah, yeah, uh, yourselves and other people like an experience that they don't have on the record. So that that's cool. I just meant like when it's just very clear that it can't be replicated. Yeah, I understand that. Like I'm just like, yeah. Ooh. so yeah, so yeah. so that's. And I, but, I, and I, I do feel the same thing unless yeah. the band kind of uh, you know makes and totally different effort to do something else i mean uh, i've seen lots of times there's a band who plays a song that they obviously can't do live in the way that is on the record but then they take a completely different approach and then they do something completely different with the song and that that's fine by me that that, that can be interesting okay cool 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 so for your uh starting with the the first full length the death of the universe uh, you guys uh got some pretty great people working on the record with you. Like it was produced by uh, Raleigh Eskolan, who I guess is one of Finland's biggest producers. And yep. also uh, had some mastering from our gardener, who is in yep. the ride, very uh, in, in the world of, of shoegaze and whatnot, uh, legendary in that regard. So uh, how did you guys end up hooking up with uh, such prominent talent? Mm, well, the uh, producer, that record was originally supposed to be Produce well. It was planned that it was would be produced by uh, the guitarist from actually CMX, which is my favorite band, okay. Janne Halkrona. But uh, then he kind of he listened to our uh, previous things, and I can't remember if he listened to our demos or something. But he was like, "I don't have the chops for this kind of thing. I, I can't." He had been producing some records, but uh, he was like, uh, "I don't." I, I can't do this. That's way too. I can't remember if he, if he said sophisticated, but way way too something for him. And then yeah. I just asked him, "Well, can you recommend somebody else? Because you kind of already said that you might be doing this." And then was we'll yeah, I called this guy, and I was like, uh, "You know that he's one of the most well-known producers in Finland, and I'm just a guy, so I'll just call him." And he was like, "Yep, yeah, that's how it goes." <laughs> <laughs> now did but, he give you the the, the, the recommendation he, he did give me some contact information and all that but in the end it took its time it didn't go exactly like that i can tell you that but that's a bit of a long story for this so i'll tell it another time but in okay. the end uh he it all worked out got around and uh produced the first record and then actually the second record as well so, so what was he like to work with in terms of just insight? In terms An of just incredible guy, yeah. we actually kind of hit it off immediately. I mean, that that was we have really the same kind of thinking about how to arrange songs and how to do this and that and how to even actually work in the studio and even think about all kinds of things. Well, he's become a very dear friend of mine during Good. the course of these couple of albums. And I'd like to think that with the other band members as well, who's, who he's worked with, because everybody's kind of praising him all the time. But he's a really, really nice guy. I, I really like him. Good. And I've got to, I got to give credit to the uh, the original producer there because, you know, to, to actually admit, hey, this might be too much for me, not everyone would. And they might say, oh, yeah, I got this. And then the end product yeah. is just is just terrible. So, so like, to... to and he's an yeah. incredible producer. He's, yeah. he's, he really knows his stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. So it's so, so it's cool because, like, you, you got to be big enough to admit when something's a bit, you know, beyond your reach. So that's yeah. uh, just as a quick uh, a quick thing there. Okay, so now for the mastering with Mark, uh, how did you end up uh, hooking up with him? Well, that, so that is guy. actually a story which I will tell. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I've ne I'd never, I'm a lifelong ride fan myself, or at least from the 90s, so, and uh, or no, from going blank again. Originally, nowadays, I do like nowhere, actually, but uh, anyway, that's a different discussion. Uh, during the pandemic, again, while we were actually already, I can't remember if we were already recording the Death of the Universe or if, if we were just making like pre-production for it. But it was already kind of on its way somehow. And uh, I'd never seen Ride live. And I, during the pandemic, there were these, you know, uh, gigs which were like, what's the word in English? Uh, 
you could buy a ticket for like a remote show or they were oh like a, a live stream yeah yeah just, like yeah, a live, a live stream, stream concert yeah, yeah 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 a live stream concert only without without any audience or without anything and i was like i i've never been a fan of those kinds of things but i was like i've never seen these guys live and now i got my now, now i'm gonna buy a live stream ticket for a ride show and i did the show had its own technical problems and whatnot and because of that uh, i got a recording of the show and because i paid my money and i couldn't see the original show and all right. that so they sent a recording of the whole show to me and i noticed at some point at the show that the drummer from ride lost colbert is talking about sibelius who's uh, this finnish famous composer classical composer and i was like <laughs> all right that's interesting <laughs> and i happened to went to a twitter to his twitter page just asking him that hey well were you talking about sibelius or uh, did i hear this right so what's going on and uh, we ended up i ended up uh, conversing with him quite a lot about the subject and um, i sent him a playlist of my favorite sibelius songs and all that and somehow through that i kind of noticed that Mark is doing mastering and mixing and he's got his own studio and all that. So I just thought that, hey, what the hell, why not? I mean, he's one of my favorite musicians, so why, why not ask him to master this record if he's doing this kind you, of thing? Because I you, thought that there's enough British kind of thing there as well. Yeah, plus you've already, you had already... You had already got Raleigh Scullin, so like you're on a roll. Yeah. It's like, listen, I got this yeah, big yeah. dude. I got to get this big dude. Yeah, We're yeah, gonna yeah. have awesome personal helping us out. And that works out quite perfectly as well. I have to admit, and I've become, uh, I'd like to think, a friend with Mark as well. And we might have some news concerning him later on, actually concerning our next record. But oh. that, it's not. I can't divulge them yet. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk to. You. I'm going to think mastering. I'm going to go out on a limb and say he might master it. And I'm going to go out on a bigger limb because that's what he's done for your, your previous two records. I'm going to say he's going to, I, you don't have to confirm this. Yep. He'll, he'll guest on a song. He's going to guest on a song, do some vocals with you. And that's, that's, that's my guess is Mark well, Gardner on a pennies by the pound song. Say something up. for sure. We're going to be recording that in England. Okay, very cool. So, very cool. so that, that, that's, that's got something to do with it, let's say. I, I, I hear you. And speaking of England and the United Kingdom, uh, you guys seem to do pretty well over there in terms of just the response to your music. Do you think that is largely the, the Mark Gardner influence? Is it just the sound like kind of really resonates with, with British people? What let's say that I, I suppose Mark does help. I, I, I have to admit that for sure. But uh, let's say that... Uh, uh, Hmm. Without sounding too much of a fanboy, I have to say that I've always liked English or the UK scene and culture, mm -hmm. and especially the music scene, music culture. Some other things as well. Why not? Some of my relatives live in the UK, and I've been there over my life quite a lot as well. And it, I, I can't deny that there's quite a lot of uk influence in our music as well like if you think about like stephen wilson or porcupine tree or something like that and mary lee and whatnot there, there's a lot of that dna and even brick pop like basic like you know i mean blur oasis that kind of thing you, you can hear that kind of thing there as well quite i think quite a lot yeah so, so really it, it's just you just have such a strong influence from going there and enjoying it. It probably just seeps into you guys. I suppose. I, I, I can't really tell as a Finnish person, I mean, because I, I'd i like to think that I've been there myself, I mean, yeah. enough in my life that I, I, I kind of can skip with, between those both worlds. But thinking about the average listener in the uk i can't really say but i'm happy that they like it because it's yeah no def uh, definitely it's hard to get into people's heads but it does seem like the band really does well there and i guess um at, at home what is the prog or like prog adjacent scene like in like in helsinki in finland etc is is it pretty decent or are you guys kind of on a bit of an island there mm, it's not big let's say it's 
it's uh, Finland is not a well by terms of population, Finland is not a big country. No, it's so like five, five or six million. Uh, total, it's like five point six or five point seven or something okay. like that. And uh, there's there's a lot of music going on here and a lot of rock music, but uh, in terms of prog, there's only like a couple of major bands, and we're not even one of the major bands. So there's maybe one or two like. Well, they're touring there, like the Von Herzen brothers, for example, they're touring in the UK. And they actually did some records in the uh, States as well. And uh, what else? Well, they're probably the biggest one. Yeah. But no, I, I've seen, the, I've, I've noticed that, uh, well, not because of us, but maybe it's the times in general that there's been a, quite an influx of like new prog like really classical prog bands. I mean, like seven, really like seventies, six, late sixties, early seventies, kind of this really intricate uh, early Genesis or early Yes mm. or that, that, those kinds of things. And uh, we don't play that kind of thing, but I really like seeing them. I mean, it's uh, young guys. I mean, most of them are like in their twenties now, and it's really fun. That's really. It's a good thing to see. <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> that, it's like it's the next generation of musicians kind of yeah. bringing back a, a sound that you enjoy from the past. Yeah. You yeah. know what? T take credit, Johannes. It's you and the fellows. You, you do the prog there based in Helsinki, and people have gotten to know you locally. And you're, the movement is, it's from you. Like, just you say that. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going <laughs> to well, say, we're going to say it's pays <laughs> by the pound. We're going to say pays right. by the pound. Pa is pound for pound bringing the most to the local prog scene. Where you live, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that. I'll say oh, it on I'm... your on your behalf. We'll 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 do that up. Thank you very and, much. And actually, you know, it's just just as a random as we as we wrap up the UK thought portion of uh, of our chat. Your English, which by the way, I know you spend time obviously in California, but it's excellent. You kind of when you speak English, almost have like the slightest hint I find anyway of a British no. accent. So maybe even just people hearing you talk, you just you sound familiar. You know what I mean? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, I could. And, I could be off there, but that's just the, kind of how I how I hear you. Yeah, I, so. I, I used to talk with um, more of an American accent when I was younger, but at some point, visiting the UK so much, it kind of changed. Yeah, it's funny how yeah. that works. Like it just yeah, kind of yeah. It it's, it's not not like deliberate or anything. <laughs> it's no. just it goes. Up. And now, yeah. well, now I've been speaking like this for maybe almost twenty years, so. This is what's going to be. <laughs> yep, it is. Sound, it sounds good. The only word I know in Finnish is "kitos," which oh, means thank, kitos. which means thank you. So, so, yeah, so, 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 kitos to you for 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 chatting to me today. Other than that, I, I don't know, man. I, I'd love to. I'd love to learn a few more words. I, I think it was like, do you guys have like fifteen tenses or something in Finnish? Like, yeah, it's just, an, just an yeah, amazing yeah, amount yeah. of. There's not? quite a lot. I don't think about them too much because I'm not very. Well, because you're finished. It's just you're done. Yeah. <laughs> you don't you don't you don't need to think. It's your uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's uh no, it's it's cool, man. It's a, a, being like as a guy learning French right now, like uh, being multilingual, such an amazing oh, you're in Quebec, yeah. Uh, yes, that's right. Yeah. So yeah. I mean I wanted to learn for a long time and now being here, obviously I get to to practice it every day and whatnot. And I'm 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 doing um at actually right here at Levin, University of Levin, Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. doing a, a class for it. So um yeah, it's uh, don't ever take that skill for granted, man. Being able to yeah, I know, I know. It's, I'm, it's I'm fantastic. Not, English is the only language I'm good at. I mean, I, I know a bit of French and a bit of German because my cousins uh, used to live in Belgium, or they're from Belgium actually. So they, well, I'm Belgian, so they speak mm -hmm. French, and I've been listening to French all my childhood, but I couldn't. I can say il est quelle heure, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's, yeah. that's all good. Oh no, it's uh, every language is you know it's they're they're unique in their own right and they're all if yeah, they're not your native yeah. language they're all hard to learn really uh especially yeah, for that's some true. people yeah. like like me i don't know yeah, but uh true. it's it's cool it's very cool okay so if we look ahead to um 2024 so you mentioned obviously now you have uh a new drummer who you guys can use live and probably on the recordings so is it fair to say that uh, uh we've got some shows on the docket for even if not like confirmed for 2024 that is a pennies by yeah we already point. have a couple of shows for january Oh, good. Actually, we do, and uh, we're hoping because we are gonna go record in England at some point during the next year. The exact date is not still clear, but uh, we're hoping to have some shows over there at the same time as well. So, 
because okay. it would be very convenient. That you'd be there anyway. That's true. Okay, yeah, so yeah. so so the shows that you guys are doing for sure. So those are at home. Those are probably yeah. in the Helsinki area, and then hopefully the UK when you go record. And then, um, where else in Finland as well. We're, we're, we're trying to finish live scene now. Is really really after the pandemic, it hasn't really picked up. I think it's like that everywhere, honestly. Like it's just people uh, because it's got it's just gotten so much. Everything's gotten so much more expensive. Yeah. So the, the touring yeah. aspect, I think, is tough for a lot of bands. There are still there are still people who they they just don't like to go out as much. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. Because yeah. it's just they got used, got used to staying home. I it, or or they're also a little bit like nervous about it. So yeah, like, it's yeah, just definitely, kind of, yeah. Yeah, so it's 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 like that everywhere, really. But um, so you just kind of got to do what you can there. But that's cool. Okay, so so shows uh, going to record your new record. Uh, that that's that's a that's a good twenty twenty four. Well, I'm, well that, that, that's a year's that. worth of doing things. Yeah. And when we get recording, I know that that's gonna take. We have to rehearse for that. We have a. It might be an EP this time around. I'm not sure yet, but because there's, I have a couple of songs, and then. The, maybe the first time around, there's going to be some songs from the other guys as well. So we'll see okay, how that I goes. See. And... Gotcha. All right. Interesting. So we'll look for that in 2024. In the meantime, the most recent record is Nothing Side, which uh, came out earlier this year. You can go to penniesbythepound.bandcamp.com for uh, all their stuff. Uh, they're on social. It'll be all in the description uh, of this video, so you can check. And there's the album. That's that's a yep. CD. Just came Side. out on the physical media because we... Oh. There it is. Uh, we're, 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 well, it looks weird, but we're, we're trying to... We're sure that CDs will come back some point. Actually, they have a little bit already, yeah. but we're trying well, to they're... push that. <laughs> Well, I mean, selling CDs at the live shows, I mean, that's yeah. that's where it's at. Or like, yeah. like you do... If you did like a bundle thing, like I love getting yeah, those, yeah, yeah. Uh, too, yeah. like just like, like a t-shirt CD and it's, yeah, it's this yeah, yeah. price. We have that kind like of a bundle like, as well. Yeah. There you go. So you go and check that From out. From our uh, band camp, you can get a t-shirt, a CD, you can get a t-shirt and a vinyl record of Heat Death of the Universe. Uh, sadly, we don't have this on vinyl yet. We might at some point, but not right now. That's 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 a delayed thing anyway, man. It's, it's wild how yeah. long... Releases yeah, the, of, even the hit record. Going, I mean, yeah, it took I mean. almost a year to get that. Yeah, that like, was backed up. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that that was terrible because we lost all of that momentum trying to sell that vinyl as well. <laughs> that's why I always wonder, like, if bands should just wait until everything's ready. But I get that, like, you don't want to sit on music for like two or three years yeah. either. So it's just this, this the vinyl. They gotta yeah, and you have to get that cut down. If somehow. you want to get shows, you need to plan that very much in advance and all that. Yeah. So it's yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right, Johannes. So listen, it was good to talk to you, man. I appreciate you doing it this. It was really and, uh, nice talking to you, man. Yeah, no, no, for sure. We'll uh, we'll, we'll do it again sometime. And uh, in the meantime, enjoy uh, your Halloween, however you will spend it. In Helsinki, you can take off the bucket hat or you can keep it on. It's all good. Ooh, uh, and, remains uh, to be seen. I don't know. There, there you go. All right, my friend. Thank you for the time. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.